I says, I don't want to marry you. <laughs>
Penny Cloyd and I have been married 53 years. 53 years. As Claudia said, we laugh a lot, we had our ups and downs in marriages, but we stayed together, we talked things through, we learned how to communicate. And that's what's important. If you have issues in some way in your marriage, talk it through. Don't always have to be right. So many people today rather be right than successful. Guys, don't be so bullheaded. Get a chance to talk and communicate with each other. Learn to laugh a lot, learn to pray with one another. That's why we have a good marriage today. All the years I'm married, we're still like no place. And I say that, and I'm proud about that. My mother and father were married 60 years. I remember going to my father one day, coming from an Italian family. I said to my father, I said, Dad, you and Mom have been married 60 years. Tell me the secret of your success in a marriage. And my father always had a sense of humor. Let me tell you what our secret is, Angelo. He said, we're Italians, and your mother always wanted to go to Italy. So I told her, we'll go to Italy. So on our 10th wedding anniversary, I took her to Italy. And 50 years later, I went back and got her. That's how I had a good marriage. <laughs> that was my father. Came my guy. Let me just say this. We lived in a one-bedroom apartment. I was getting my, I, Claudia had put me through school. I could not get into a college, but I realized I had to get educated. So I got, went to a, a Northern Virginia community college, a, a community college, because it had an open door policy. The open door policy was, we don't care what grades you like, if you excel here, we'll keep you here. If not, you gotta leave. I'm a little older now, I had a lady, a, a woman supporting me, helping me. So I went there two years, and I had a four average all through to community college. From there, I went to George Mason University, a four year university in, 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 in education. There I graduated with a four O. Uh, at George Mason University. From there, I went to Baird University. Got my master's in education. I, met, I, I graduated with a four O average there. I got a four average all through, all through college. I'm not bragging because I was bright. I'm bragging because I was persistent. Because in high school, I, was, I would cut classes and got lousy grades. But when you start believing in stuff, you have someone supporting you and believing in you, things change. Well, when I was in college for my master's degree, I was going for my PhD. I had a friend of mine in undergraduate school who was in this business, and he approached me. Let me tell you my story real quick. And he called me on the phone, he said, Angelo, he says, uh, I want to talk to you about something. I went across the business, looks very good. And I said, Bob, I said, I don't have any time. I don't have any money. I'm going to get my PhD. He said, no problem. I said, call me in two years. He said, no problem. I'll see you tomorrow night, 8 o'clock at your house. <laughs> this is the honest God true story now. I hung up the phone, and Claudia said, who was that? I said, this is the guy I went to school with. He's coming to our house tomorrow night. I said, for what? I don't know. She was a business. Angela, we don't have any money to invest in business, and you're going to get your, your, your doctors. You don't have time. Yeah. He's going to be here at 8 o'clock. Call him back. I said, I don't have his number. <laughs> right. I said, take what? We're going out. So at 6 o'clock, Claudia and I, my little boys, Sonny, got in the car and went shopping. <laughs> and we came back at 9. You would never, I would never sponsor someone like me. <laughs> and I come back, and he had his business card stuck in my door. Put it on there, call me. I didn't call him. Next day, I went to the university. Two days later, calls me. Angel, this is Bob. Hey, Bob, what happened to him? I said, Bob, totally forgot all about it. I said, well, listen, I don't really have time right now. I said, I'll tell you, he said, don't worry about it. I said, Bob, listen to me. Call me in two years. I'll be interested then. No problem. She don't want me at 8 o'clock. <laughs> Folks, is exactly how Hangs up the phone. 6 o'clock, we went out again. True story. We left again. We come back. Another business card of his stuck in my door in my apartment. Call me. He underscored it this time. <laughs> I didn't call it. Three days later, he calls me again. Angelo, what's going on? I said, Bob, look, look. We went out. I said, but I didn't get back. I said, Bob, I'm not interested. And he said, Angelo, trust me with this one. You're going to love what I'm I said, Bob, I'll tell you what. Call me in two years. I'll be interested then. <laughs> he said, I'll see you tomorrow at 8 o'clock. <laughs> This is what happened. 
I says, call me. He's, I'll be there at your house at 8 o'clock. 6 o'clock. I get a knock on the door. <laughs> it up. It was Bob. <laughs> 6 o'clock. He walks in my house. He and his wife. All dressed up. Suit. His wife had a dress on. He comes in with a board diesel. I'm sitting there with Claudia. We're sitting there having dinner. My little boy's in a high chair. I had a TV on. He's very confident. He walked in, walks in the house, walks over to the TV, turns around. <laughs> turns around. Takes out his board and easel and puts it up in my living room. I'm sitting there looking at Claudia. She's looking at me like, that's not on here. Next thing I knew, he said, I'm going to catch it. And you want to eat? No, I, I'm, I'm fine. I don't eat anything. I, we get done. I'm sitting there. Jeans on, sweatshirt, had long hair, had a full beard. I look like one of seven dwarfs. <laughs> we were in the living room. He stands up there and starts showing the plan. Now, right now it's like seven o'clock. He starts drawing circles. You know what? I built it. I'm watching it. He's drawing lines to this, lines to that, circles here, stuff like that. I thought maybe he's selling balloons or something. <laughs> He's talking, talking, talking. Talk. Seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, ten o'clock. True story. It's all going wrong. Ten thirty, eleven o'clock. Start talking at seven. All of a sudden, his wife gets picked. My wife comes up. Angie, I have to go to bed. And she says, "You guys can keep on talking." She answered me. You got, you got to go to university tomorrow. I said, "No problem." She goes to the bedroom. I said, "Bob, go ahead, keep on talking." <laughs> Twelve o'clock. His wife gets up. I drove to the couch. I slips off her shoes, takes her coat, pulls up, and she lays on the couch. You guys keep on talking. She's I had to school tomorrow also. She was a teacher. Twelve o'clock. One o'clock. Two o'clock. Three o'clock. He finished the presentation at three o'clock. He started at seven o'clock. Eight hours. When he finished that presentation, I knew everything about him. <laughs> I was, I hated dream building. I drove Cadillacs. I drove Mercedes. I, oh my God. <laughs> he left. I said, okay, Bob, I'm interested in this business. I want to do this. He said, okay. He said, I'll call you tomorrow. I go to bed. I'm laying in bed at 3 o'clock. I had to get up at 6. I go to university. I'm seeing circles on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, who am I going to sponsor in this business? <laughs> my eyes were like this. So Claudia says, uh, the alarm goes off at 6 o'clock. Ange, wake up. I said, was awake. I, she said, wake up. You have to get up. I said, Claudia, I'm still up. She said, Ange, look, what time did an idiot leave our house last night? <laughs> I said, idiot? That's our sponsor. <laughs> Wow. 
I said, I said two thousand dollars if you build a business with a team. He said, listen, you're doing good. Don't worry about it. Sorry. All right. I'll go back home. I'll get you a plug. I said, look, we got our first check. <laughs> three dollars and ten cents. <laughs> That's the check for four months. Three dollars and ten cents. Angel, don't tell anybody about that word now. <laughs> don't tell anybody. I said, call me next month. Bring me a check for two thousand dollars. Okay. Next month, call me. Your check's here. Three dollars and fifty-five cents. <laughs> Three fifty-five. I said, Bob, come on. He goes, Angela. Three fifty-five. I said, He says, It's getting bigger. I said, yeah, it's bigger. <laughs> I said, well, Let me say something. Every time I left my sponsor's house, he left me encouraged. When you're down with your downline, always make your downline feel good when they're with you. Don't no shit negative. Don't say negative. And then he said to me, Angelo, three dollars and fifty-five cents. He said, Do you realize how many people get an Amway and never get a check? I mean, I'm naive, I'm stupid, but maybe feel bad. He said, You're in the minority of people who get checks like this. So I thought, oh, that <laughs> I couldn't wait to come home and show Claudia this big check. Claudia, another check. Three fifty-five. Angelo, please don't tell anybody we're in the Amway business, okay? <laughs> So my sponsor said, I'm going to take you to a seminar with a big yes. You don't know this person. His name is Dr. Roland Hughes. Dr. Roland Hughes is an executive lineman in, in the Dutch Yankers organization. He's a friend of mine to this day. I was 300 P, I was a 100 P day on that seminar. I sat there and listened to this man talk. The reason I was so impressed with him because where he was at at one time as a college professor at the University of Kentucky, that's where I was going. I was going to be a professor at American University in the field of psychology. That's all I said. He spoke for three hours. I sat there in fraud and listened to him. It was all done. I shook his hand. I said, Dr. Hughes, that's a financial question. How come you're doing this family business and not being a college professor? He said, You see this lady here my wife? As a college professor, she didn't come to work with me. Where do we spend time together all the time? That's my life. Number two, he says, I make more money in one month than I made in one year. The more he talked, the more I'm starting to like what he's talking about. <laughs> Thirdly, he says, do you ever work with somebody you want to work with? I said, yeah. See, I don't. The people I, the people I work with are people I like working with. Wow. The more he talked, the more I liked it. I told my sponsor, I says, let's get our business started. 18 months, we start working the business. Claudia was not involved. The person I wanted to sponsor in this business weren't anybody who like Claudia. Let me be honest with some of you men. If you want your wife to support you, don't talk about what you're going to do. You do what you're supposed to do. You got to, you got to, guys, listen to me. Guys, you got to walk your talk. Too many guys are just talking and not walking. You got to walk your talk. If you want your wife to work with you in the business and prove it, don't say, if you do this, I'll do that. Huh? You're the man in the house. So I got together and I started building this business. And for 18 months, I did this business for myself and my client. I want to prove to her this business will work. In 18 months, we went Ruby. I spoke to people, and I got a check, listen, I got a check for $14,800. Wow. 